The Barnegat Pirates became so well known that there's one instance of a vessel that ran aground when the Life Saving Service volunteers took their own boat to go to this ship to effect the rescue. Of course, back then, this was before they had uniforms assigned to them. They just wore, you know, the clothes of a, you know, a farmer or a fisherman at the time. And the captain of the vessel, fearing that they were coming to his ship to raid his ship and murder him, committed suicide. There, there was that much fear in the 1800s of the Barnegat Pirates. You know, how much of the fear was justified, nobody will ever know because nobody's going to talk about it. They didn't talk about it then, and the families of the wreckers aren't talking about it now either. Lying just off the coast of central New Jersey sits an 18-mile-long barrier island. Named Long Beach by the early European settlers, it gained its name from its miles of sprawling coastline and long stretches of the white sand beach. When Dutch explorer Cornelius Jacob May was sailing around the north end of this island in 1614, he came upon a narrow inlet with some very treacherous tides. He named the area Berendigat, meaning Inlet of the Breakers. Since that time, the name has been shortened to Barnegat, and seafaring mariners have borne the task of navigating the inlet's dangerous and unpredictable waters. By 1789, farmers were grazing their cattle on Tucker's Island and Long Beach. And nearby, in Little Egg Harbor, a small shipping port was getting a name change. Clamtown would become Tuckerton. The area had once been a center for whaling, but by the early 1880s, whales around Long Beach had been hunted to near extinction. Visiting sportsmen were now coming to hunt and fish. Accommodations were being built for them. And at the south end of the island stood the Horner House. It was bought by Thomas Bond in 1851, who changed the name to Bond's Long Beach House. Bond spent his days and nights entertaining wealthy sportsmen and socialites from Philadelphia. Local fishermen, known as the Baymen, were building shanties and small cottages there, making their living fishing, clamming, and farming oysters. By 1865, steamboats were bringing visitors across the bay to Long Beach. Wealthy Philadelphians began constructing large houses in an area known as Beach Haven. Elegant hotels were being built, like the Parry House, completed in 1874 followed by the Engelside Hotel in 1876. Small shops were opening on Beach Avenue. After the Parry House burned to the ground in 1881, the Hotel Baldwin was constructed and opened in 1883. With its dance parties and social events, the Baldwin was considered the more lively alternative to the more discriminating Engleside. In 1882, the Beach Haven Yacht Club was founded, and a wharf was built at the end of Mud Hen Creek. By 1907, 
there were over 350 residents living in Beach Haven. The town of Ship Bottom got its name from the tale of a shipwreck and the rescue of a young woman. Found trapped in the keel of a capsized ship, rescuers chopped a hole in the boat's bottom with an axe, freeing the young lady. She spoke no English, but as an expression of her gratitude, drew a cross of thanks in the sand. The location of her rescue became known as Ship Bottom. The little seaside town would also become known as the gateway to Long Beach. When a bridge was built in 1914, linking the island to the mainland. Surf City was once part of an area known as the Great Swamp. A forest of oak and cedar trees that covered the entire northern end of Long Beach. The Mansion of Health was built there in 1821 when the German immigrant ship Powhatan shipwrecked in 1854, not far from the mansion. A local wreckmaster stored the dead bodies of its victims in the basement of the hotel. It was claimed that the spirits of those souls never left. Guests began making claims about seeing shadowy figures and hearing cries in the night. By 1853, the Mansion of Health was deserted. Locals continued to refer to the area as Old Mansion, then Long Beach City, before settling on Surf City in 1894. Whalers had operated in the area of Harvey Cedars and the Great Swamp as far back as the 1600s. Magnificent cedar trees had once been harvested there until the Great Hurricane of 1821, which completely destroyed the entire forest and cedar swamp. In 1841, a local resident expanded his summer home, turning it into a boarding house and opening it up to visitors. He called it the Harvey Cedars Hotel. In 1871, the original Harvey Cedars Life Saving Station was sold then towed down to the southern tip of the island and renamed the Hotel de Crab. Harvey Cedars was incorporated as a borough in 1894. In the 1870s, U.S. Life Saving Station 18 was named after Love Lady Island in Barnegat Bay. The little seaside village has gone by the names Clubhouse and Long Beach Park before reverting to its original name of Love Ladies in 1952. In the early 1800s, shipwrecks near Barnegat Inlet became so frequent that the United States government felt the need to take action. In 1834, the first manned lighthouse was constructed on the northern tip of Long Beach. Built so close to the sea, by 1857, it had been consumed by the waves of the Atlantic Ocean. A new lighthouse was built in 1859. Old Barney, as it was locally known, 
stood 165 feet tall, the second tallest lighthouse in the United States. The opulent oceanic and sunset hotels were also opening in Barnegat City. Long Beach was becoming a playground for the elite. In 1886, a trestle was built, crossing the bay onto the island. Locomotives from the Pennsylvania Railroad were now bringing visitors to Long Beach. New communities like Spray Beach and Brant Beach developed as the railroad stretched the length of the island. Some of the earliest occupants of Long Beach were the pound fishermen. They would set up a complicated series of offshore nets. Fish would swim into the nets, then be funneled into a trap, or pound as it was called. The pound fishermen would then row out to the pound, raise the net, and load their boats to capacity. They would then row back to the beach where a team of horses would pull the boat up onto the beach. The fish were unloaded, then transported by train to fish markets throughout the region. Pound net fisheries operated all along the Jersey Shore from the 1870s to the 1960s, catching bluefish, striped bass, tuna, butterfish, fluke, flounder, and mackerel. Those that knew the baymen and pound fishermen referred to them as some of the most self-sufficient men they ever met. On June 20th, 1914, a huge celebration took place to commemorate the opening of a newly constructed causeway that was built across Barnegat Bay. Automobiles paraded across the bridge and up and down the island. Festivities included a huge dinner at the Baldwin Hotel with baseball games and fireworks. Long Beach Islanders have become seasoned veterans when it comes to taking on fierce Atlantic storms that batter the Jersey coast. On September 14, 1944, a powerful hurricane hit the shores with winds of 95 miles per hour. The violent storm surge lifted vacation cottages off their foundations and carried them blocks away, picking up the island's only boardwalk and crushing it like toothpicks. Over 300 homes and businesses were destroyed by the great storm. In 1950, the Surflight Theater opened in Beach Haven, originally holding performances in a 2,000-seat tent until the theater company moved to a mechanic's garage on Ingleside Avenue in 1954. Construction of a new theater was completed in 1987. The popularity of Long Beach Island increased even more when the Garden State Parkway was linked to Manahawkin in 1954. In 1956, a new four-lane causeway replaced the old two-lane wooden bridge. The new bridge spanned five land masses, bringing both visitors and home buyers. 
In 1961, Ron Domena opened his first Ron John surf shop in Shipbottom. This hip little surf shop on the beach became the model for one of the largest surf shop chains in the world. For three days, from March 6th to March 8th, 1962, a relentless killer storm pounded the entire island, taking 32 lives, tearing up beaches, property, and resulting in millions of dollars worth of damage. One tremendous tidal surge washed over the entire island, causing it to split apart in several places. Roads and houses were left underwater. 80% of the structures on the island were damaged or completely destroyed. The Ash Wednesday storm of 1962 would be known as one of the most destructive in New Jersey's history. By the 1970s, word of the island's colorful charm had spread. Working-class families began flocking to LBI for its beautiful beaches and old-style appeal, buying up modest cottages and beach homes. In 1984, a two-and-a-half-mile stretch of beach and marshland on the southern end of the island was set aside to create the Edwin B. Forsyth National Wildlife Refuge. This beautiful natural habitat serves as a feeding and nesting ground for migrating birds and is one of the Jersey Shore's most pristine treasures. In the mid-1980s, Fantasy Island Amusement Park was created, featuring thrilling rides, entertainment, a casino arcade, and an old-fashioned ice cream parlor. With its ornate lamp posts and Tiffany-style chandeliers, one can still sense the Victorian air of days gone by. On the northern end of the island, visitors can still climb to the top of Barnegat Light for a spectacular view, offering a totally relaxed atmosphere. Visitors flock to LBI every summer to enjoy its beaches, the ocean, fishing and boating, or dining at any of its fine restaurants. With no boardwalk, only one amusement area, and fewer hotels, motels, and bars, Long Beach Island is one of the most fun, laid-back, family-friendly resorts on the Jersey Shore. <laughs> 